Hi, my name's Drew Beinhart. I'm 23 years old, and this is my story. So I'm not from here, I'm from Michigan. That's where I was born, in a small little town, West Branch. It was farmlands, so we either would go bowling or go bowling. Back in high school, it was kind of a hoodlum. <laughs> you can call it that in West Branch farmland, but I was a guy rolling down the street with the windows down and the bass cranked up, sitting real low. <laughs> I wanted to get out of Michigan and do something different. And so I just packed my stuff up and I took off and I drove out here. Uh, I grew up going to church every day. Um, and as a kid, it's fun because there's a lot of fun stuff. And as you get older, um, through middle school and high school, I still went to church, but it started being something that I just had to do. And I remember CLC, Christian Life Club, being something that I just despised because my mom like let it. But I put the face on when I went to church. Um, I smiled big and I gave hugs and I loved on people. Um, but that, that was just my Sundays and it didn't carry on onto the rest of my week. And so I, I built this this double life. I got into a relationship with this girl and she, she, she matched up with all the little things that I thought that I would want in a, in a girl. It started out kind of slow and things were good and then things be, began to kind of spiral down in that relationship too as things, um, the physical side of our relationship began to be our relationship and that's what it was based on. And, and I tried to fill a lot of the hole in me with that. It drove a really big wedge between me and, and God and finding God. And not just that, but it, it drove a wedge between me and everybody that cared about me. And that relationship lasted for uh, a year and a half, and it was torture. It was torture inside, and, and I cried. I've cried more than I ever did so far in my life during that year and a half. And I know that a lot of the crying was was based on trying to lead two different lives, completely separate, um, and it weighed on me. It was a struggle from there to, to find who I was and, and what I've been doing and um, to understand that I was so insecure and I found my security in my relationship with her. And I had yet to, to flip on the, the God-seeking switch yet, and so I it all sunk in and it, 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 it sat in my heart somewhere, but I didn't really, I didn't really get it yet. Because I had some serious, like, bad stuff and evil going on in my life, and so I just shunned anything that was good. I pushed away my family during those times. Um, I, I ran away from church, and, and I ran away from those feelings inside that told me no, 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 because, um, I was in this selfish cycle of trying to figure things out for myself. And it wasn't until those last couple of years that I began to understand what that feeling inside was on Sunday mornings in high school. That, that pulling, that, that point where I would just cry for no reason, and that was God. That was God saying, what are you doing? <laughs> you, you're not going to fill that hole with all this stuff. You're not going to do it. Um, you can't do it. Uh, you need me. And so I began my journey. <laughs> and I still am journeying. But it's the right journey. And I began to fill um, that void, not with, with females, not with um, awards, but with, with godly things, um, godly relationships, and, and God work as in, as in investing in the lives of others. And that stuff started to fill up. Um, parts of my, my heart and soul that I'd, I never felt before. Now, just now, I mean, I'm 23 years old and just now I'm beginning to form the relationships with my sisters and my mom and dad that I should have had all along. I try to get it across, but I don't know how to put it into words. That It's just, it's so incredible. It's so incredible to um, talk with mom and dad and there not be anything in between us. There not be anything that's, that's driving me away or keeping me from telling them what's going on in my life. And so I was kind of just stuck not going anywhere. Once I got out of this group of people and as an individual moved to a different place and started doing things um, like I said that I, that I knew was right and I began putting people and things in my life that were, um, that were godly so to speak, that, that's when I began to move to actually move in a direction. 
that's kind of how the change happened, I guess, if, if I was to put it into words. I mean, I don't, I, it's obviously just a huge process, was packing up my stuff, moving out here, starting fresh and going, I'm gonna try to do it right and see what happens. <laughs> and I did. That's my prayer every every night now is that I, I don't I don't become sick of seeking, that I don't become content with where I'm at, but that I continue to strive for something more. I'm sweating sitting on this couch. Cause it's not letting my skin breathe. <laughs> and and so now that's something that's been in me and I know Jesus lives in me, but now it's breaking out and um, I, I want to let that break out and just just overflow um, because Jesus is really the only reason that helped me get through the struggles that I went through and beat um, the problems that I was in because he, he lived within me. Um, and how to, how to explain that or put it into layman's terms, well, I don't really know how to put that into good words for people other than I know where I was and I know where I am and I know I didn't do it by myself. Uh, it's just it's like one, it's it's one of those undeniable things I was battling in, in different forms of addiction now I'm not what happened well I'll tell you what it was something that lived inside me and that's Jesus <laughs>